Hi, and welcome to New God Sunday School. I'm Tom Scholey, author of Jack Kirby, The Epic Life of the King of Comics. I am Stan, a graphic biography of the legendary Stan Lee, and Jack Kirby, Star Warriors, The Adventures of Adam Starr and the Solar Legion. I'm also hard at work on the new superhero comic, Witchman, which just had a successful Kickstarter campaign. So here is the Jimmy Olsen Adventures by Jack Kirby collection, which came out in 2003. It's a really beautiful collection, really nicely printed, great paper, like an off-white and nicely textured, uncoated paper, which in the intervening years has aged into like a beautiful yellow, like, you know, just kind of perfect for the old comic subject matter. And they each had these great covers. Uh, it was two, it was broken into two volumes. This is volume one, there's a second volume. And they each have these great covers where they take a rejected Jack Kirby, Jimmy Olsen cover, of, of which he had a few, and um, they bring somebody in to, to ink it. And in this case, it's Steve Rude, a legendary artist in his own right, a massive Jack Kirby fan. Um, if you watch any of his videos, um, he's constantly singing the praises of Jack Kirby and all the various things he learned from Jack Kirby, you know, just doing a great job here. And around the same time, he was doing a Jack Kirby, Jimmy Olsen project with Mark Evanier. So it's just sort of a natural fit. And, uh, you know, just really nice too. Applying his own style to these Jack Kirby pencils, still maintaining, walking a really nice line between being true to Jack Kirby's original pencil drawing and then, uh, you know, infusing it with, with his own style. I, I'd say, again, uh, particularly in the face. You see sort of Steve's hand mostly in the face, but it's uh, unlike the corrected Jimmy Olsen faces, it's it's a Kirby face with a sheen as opposed to just like a completely alien face from, you know, a, an artist, uh, you know, completely unrelated to whatever Jack Kirby was drawing underneath. When these collections came out, just really beautiful, full color Jimmy Olsen collections, and it, it but it was a bummer as a fan of, you know, this entire body of work uh, of Jack Kirby's. Uh, it was a bummer that, um, you know, New Gods, Forever People, and Mr. Miracle got this kind of like black and white, gray toned reprint treatment. And then Jimmy Olsen gets the full color treatment. It seemed like a, like a misstep, which I think the people involved have since, you know, expressed some regret over not going full color with the, the Jack Kirby stuff. It was, a, it was a weird time in the comic book industry. It was uh, one of the sort of, you know, legendary down times, late 90s, early 2000s, which happened to be exactly the time that I started my comics career. So, uh, you know, when they later did reprint New Gods and Mr. Miracle and Forever People in full color, instead of giving it these like ind this individual volume treatment that Jimmy Olsen got, it got this sort of mishmash uh, fourth world omnibus, I think it was called, where they mixed everything together. And to add insult to injury, they, they mixed the Jimmy Olsen in there too. And and to me, you know, at the time, it was kind of like, okay, we already got these, you know, beautiful Jimmy Olsen volumes. Why can't we have New God's volume? Furthermore, since we already have the Jimmy Olsen, why are you watering this thing down by inserting Jimmy Olsen into it? But in any case, you know, the be beautiful two volume set. And we're gonna be talking about part two of the Don Rickles, Goody Rickles storyline. So this is from issue 141 of Superman's pal, Jimmy Olsen. The previous issue that we covered was issue 139. The reason why we skipped issue 140 is that 140 was sort of like an anniversary greatest hits issue of reprints of uh, pre-Kirby Jimmy Olsen stories. Welcome from Jimmy Olsen, his pal Superman, and a strange galaxy never before seen by man. That is, until Superman, in his guise as Clark Kent, has been hurled into the unknown, trapped in a bizarre spacecraft. This is a fix. Someone set a trap for Clark Kent and abducted Superman. I'm far from Earth. And as I mentioned in a previous episode, Jack Kirby, you know, has been experimenting with collage, you know, images taken from magazines and whatnot and pasted into these more sort of like photographic compositions and never more so than in his Jimmy Olsen work. He's, he's, you know, fully invested in collage with Jimmy Olsen. And I think largely because Jimmy Olsen wasn't part of his larger plan 
for what he was doing at DC. He felt free to experiment and play around. And also, as mentioned in a previous episode, um, give Mark Evanier and Steve Sherman something to do also. They, you know, they'd sometimes help out with, uh, you know, springboard story ideas for the Jimmy Olsen series. As a creative person, as a creative professional, you know, you have these things that you take extremely seriously. And sometimes that can be a little bit of a detriment. You take something too seriously and a, a sort of stage fright sets in and, 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 and you get kind of a little bit stiff. But then the things that you don't take as seriously, you kind of have fun with them. You're not overly precious. You're not overly scrutinizing what you're doing. And in some instances, you can create your greatest work in those moments when you're not taking things overly seriously. Jimmy Olsen's not my favorite of Jack Kirby's body of work, but it is some people's. And, and it does have an energy and a bounce that does kind of set it apart. There is something to be said for that. And now we, you know, we didn't just have, the, you know, the first page largely a collage except for this little spacecraft that Clark Kent's flying around in. Now we follow that up with a double page collage splash. And again, it's not like it's a collage background with like, you know, a Superman figure and multiple figures like you'd see in, in that one issue of Jimmy Olsen where everybody's uh, sort of like hallucinating, having this like group hallucination. Here it's like pretty much pure collage except for you know, this tiny, tiny element. So, you know, we're heading into a new territory. Unable to control his capsule prison, Clark Kent gazes helplessly as he drifts past awesome wonders that stagger all imagination. This vessel is following a pre-designated course. My only hope of return is making contact with its builders. But the unknown says nothing. It glides by a silent, shimmering animal tense and waiting for the kill. And in these reprint volumes, the collages look really good. They look a lot crisper than they did in the original printing. And it's also, you know, you can sort of make out what's going on a lot better. Although, you know, I do like the, the hazy look of the original printings. It's also a nice in-between because sometimes like the Marvel Masterworks, they, when they reprint the collages they're so crisp and so high contrast that it kind of is too much this is like a nice in between like between uh it's got a little bit of the haziness of the original but a little more clarity but not not the uh overly harsh printing of the masterworks now we you know finally get a close-up of uh clark kent gazing out the window uh, of this strange new dimension he's found himself in this contraption is drifting into a strange new system. There are only two giant planets, one brightly green and beautiful, the other in its shadow is. What's that flashing directly toward me? Ordinarily, I'd identify that as a haywire comet, but I'd swear there's something inside it. A man, its nucleus is a man, but hardly the kind you'd meet at the office. Good gravy, he's coming at me on a collision course. So we get a cameo by Light Ray of the New Gods. Reminding you that this is, uh, you know, tenuously tied in with the rest of Jack Kirby's books. Although I'd say it's not as fundamentally integrated with Jack's other books the way New Gods, Forever People, and Mr. Miracle are. Those seem to form like a cohesive whole, where this seems almost like a separate, unrelated book that occasionally has crossovers with that other body of work. And even, you know, Superman's meeting with Light Ray does not seem as, as substantive as to say that it's an inextricable part of this larger whole. And another thing I'd note that that's, I sort of occurred to me in, in reading this particular issue is the way Clark Kent's dialogue is written, it seems like Jack writes Clark Kent and Superman as sort of separate entities like even even you know like in their thought in their deepest thoughts when he's superman he thinks a certain way and when he's clark kent he thinks a certain way they're both uh connected and related but they're not they're not exactly the same guy and i think um he was sort of it was it was closer to his approach with thor and don blake that these are two parts of a whole but they're not identical when when Thor is in Don Blake mode, he he thinks a little differently. And when he's in Thor mode, he thinks a little differently, which you, you'd see like those sort of things explored, like even more directly in something like 
uh, Alan Moore's Marvel Man or Miracle Man, um, you know, so, something akin to the Billy Batson Captain Marvel duality. And in the Thor comics, sometimes it would even be part of the plot where Thor would, you know, show up at the hospital and Sif is injured and he's like, oh, let me look at her medical charts, but I need, you know, the, the uh, medical mind of Don Blake to look at these. And so then he'll turn into Don Blake because Thor, the god of thunder, uh, can't make much sense of these medical charts, but Don Blake can. So like there's a little bit of that in, in Jack's depiction of the Superman-Clark Kent duality. And now we cut back to uh, where the cliffhanger left us from the previous issue of Jimmy Olsen, the Golden Guardian, and Goody Rickles having just been poisoned by Ugly Mannheim uh, with pyrogranulate uh, in their food, which is going to make them explode within 24 hours. We've got to do something fast, Guardian. We weren't released by Intergang merely to walk away. They've made certain that it'll be a short walk. Neat. We gotta be neat, because in 24 hours, we'll be dead. Written, drawn, and edited by Jack Kirby, inked with fanatical fervor by Vince Coletta. We'll be dead, do you hear? Those rats fed us a meal loaded with pyroglocamora and dumped us out here. The chemical is pyrogranulate. By day's end, it'll activate and we'll be human fireballs. And there go ugly Mannheim and his crew tearing off in that giant mobile home they use for their headquarters. A great, uh, you know, great, great capsule summary of, of where we were in the previous issue. And now uh, the Guardian springs into action and we get a really exciting sequence for him, really nice showcase for this character doing some, you know, Captain America style acrobatic action. You know, he, he you know, we got the coming at you perspective. He's running towards the reader. He jumps onto an awning, uses it as a trampoline to spring him up. Uh, he, you know, bends on this, um, on this flagpole, which gives him an, another little bounce. He uh, runs across the rooftops, just really great sequence. And it does make me wish we'd seen more of the Guardian in this era from Jack. Uh, you know, like if he kind of got his own his own series, he could have been, uh, you know, like a continuation of, of Jack's Captain America storytelling. I mean, and this is, this sort of, um, you know, acrobatic character was, uh, you know, Simon and Kirby's stock in trade in the 1940s. You know, they'd have all these characters, you know, Captain America, Sandman and Sandy, Manhunter, and, and the Guardian, of course. All these characters that were sort of these, they didn't, they didn't fly, they didn't uh, necessarily, they couldn't shoot lasers out of their eyes, they didn't necessarily have uh, what we would think of as like superhero super strength, but they had this amazing acrobatic ability, this amazing agility, and would use... Uh, the city as as their playground, you know, and, and so they were really innovators in that respect. And Jack just carried it like even further into the 60s. And we didn't see quite so much of it in the 70s. So, so it is nice having this, uh, you know, something Kirby's particularly good at, uh, you know, having a little little venue for that. Then we cut back to Morgan Edge's office and, and his uh, secretary, Miss Conway, and they're, you know, preparing for the arrival of Don Rickles. So far, we've only seen Goody Rickles, now we've got the genuine article, the real Don Rickles, uh, the whole point of this big crossover finally arrives. And as is usual when there's like a celebrity cameo in like a 1960s or 1970s sitcom, when they show up, everybody is like, it's like the Beatles have shown up. Everybody is like a screaming, uh, drooling fan. Even though this is like a TV, this is Galaxy Broadcasting, they probably have celebrities rolling in all the time, but everybody is losing their shit over the arrival of Don Rickles. It's him! It's Don Rickles! Hi, Don! Here, Don! Gonna see the chief, Don? Relax, you cockamamies. You're liberated. The Nazis are gone. That's right. I just saw General Patton grab von Rundstedt. Sign this, Don. Write something weird and nasty. Oh, insult me, Don. Say anything, a sentence, a word. Okay, hernia. Get off me, you runaway locomotive. Go out and sit on the Chicago Bears. <laughs> this, this, it's good. It's, it's rapid fire. It's, um, you know, like, I, I, I wish Jack had gotten a chance to insert every, uh, you know, comedian of, of this era into his comics. I'd love to see, you know, Rodney Dangerfield show up in a Jack Kirby comic. 
Love the rapid fire delivery. He's off and running. Sign here, Don. Please, Don. Look out. Don't crowd him. Don't step on his hand. Yeah, he can't sign autographs with bent fingers. Uh-oh, break it up. It's the boss. What is this? Get back to your work, all of you. Oh, poor Mr. Rickles. Are you all right, Don? Sure, dumb dumb. <laughs> I love I love when people call somebody dumb dumb. You know, it makes me think of Great Gazoo in the Flintstones. Hi, dumb dumb. With Harvey Corman voicing him. Sure, <laughs> sure dumb dumb. I'm just down here. <laughs> Sure, dum-dum, I'm just down here doing push-ups, rehearsing for a big scene in the emergency ward. I can't believe Don Rickles hated this comic. I mean, you know, Jack is like just doing him such service here. Like this is, and Don Rickles was sort of famous. Uh, it became a running joke on his Johnny Carson appearances that, um, you know, every TV show he tried to have would, would bomb, would tank. And Jack Kirby's, Giving him a hit right here. This is hilarious. Like, you know, adapt this into one of your, uh, you know, into, into one of his sitcoms, please. CFO Sharky. Forgive them, Don. You know how people react to someone they admire. And I love it. I love to be admired, but not by crazed vigilantes. I should have foreseen this, taken disciplinary precautions. Tell it here to the little veins popping out of my head, to the little aggravated veins. Come now, we've got things to discuss. Savages. I'll send you 30 pounds of raw meat tomorrow morning, and may the gods rain on your memos. There, there, Mr. Rickles. You'll mend rapidly in here. Who's this broad? <laughs> Is she playing nursey nursey? That's Miss Conway, my secretary. You're great, honey. You're wasted here. You deserve something better than a typewriter and this sneaky crumb. Get yourself a bikini and start a chain of heart attacks at a garden party. Will do, Mr. Rickles. I'm so thrilled. I'm so thrilled, she says. Working for a guy like you, Morgan, watch the small print edge. I heard about you. Mr. Smoothie on the outside, Mac the knife on the inside. Be yourself, lad. Say something filthy. Money. Lots of it. This is great. This is just amazing. But unimaginable light years from this conversation, a stranger meeting takes place. I greet you, Earthman, and none too soon a native of this star system, and he came right through the wall of this space vehicle. I am Light Ray. My body is attuned to the element of light and able to assume its densities. So that's how he does it, by converting mass into light energy. Lucky for you, I was in this sector and curious to see what sort of specimen was on its way to apocalypse. You speak my language. Are you able to communicate by probing one's mind? Uh, and that's interesting. This is the first time, and maybe the only time, that's been addressed in, you know, Jack Kirby's whole, you know, like New Gods DC Comics epic. Uh, the idea that, um, you know, when we see the, the people from Apocalypse and, and New Genesis, they seem to speak English. What's the deal with that? How, how come these, these worlds that, uh, you know, predate modern English, that, wh why does it seem like that's their native language? And so, uh, you know, here's a possible suggestion that, that maybe... Maybe when they're speaking to each other, they're not speaking English. It's just being translated into English for the benefit of us, the readers. Uh, but but when they talk to a human being on the planet Earth, they yeah mentally probe and and sort of download you know the English language from the mind of the person they're talking to, and then and then can speak freely. Uh, but uh, you know Jack maybe cares enough to sort of touch on that for a second, but he's not gonna let it derail, you know, his, uh, you know, uh, where he wants to go with the story. You haven't time for small talk. This vessel is a dimension trap. It is designed to bring you to an evil fate. There, apocalypse draws closer. Now, do you wish to talk? Wow, that hardly looks like a desirable vacation spot. And it is nice, um, you know, we get precious few glimpses of Apocalypse and, and New Genesis. You know, Jack did not, was not permitted to, you know, continue that story to his intended conclusion. So I like any opportunity to get a little glimpse of this stuff. And I also like the opportunity to get to spend a little more time with Light Ray, because again, Light Ray also, uh, you know, only only appears in so many comics, so many issues. He's, so it's nice to see him uh, get a little more screen time, especially away from Orion and, and to, you know, sort of have his own moment, you know, meet meet Superman, the, the, the granddaddy of them all. It isn't. These mammoth fire pits give power to a world of grim horror. Wait, apocalypse. I've been told of this place by some strange kids. They also mentioned a name, Darkseid. We're pretty deep into 
uh, Superman's pal Jimmy Olsen, the comic that sort of started it all, the com- the first of these comics that Jack Kirby drew was Forever People number one, which has a cameo appearance, you know, by Superman. Superman's sort of the co-star of that issue. And he meets the Forever People and they tell him about New Genesis and Apocalypse and he meets Darkseid. And then we have all these issues of Superman's pal Jimmy Olsen where he does not have another encounter with Darkseid. He doesn't meet another new god. And although he is battling the evil factory, he doesn't know that they work for Darkseid, that they're part of this larger thing. He's, he's sort of uh, involved in this war and, and isn't aware of the degree to which he's involved in it. So this is really the follow-up to Forever People number one. This is where Superman finally realizes Oh yeah, Dark Side, Apocalypse. There it is. I'm 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 able to glimpse it. He got a glimpse of Supertown of the city on New Genesis. He never got a glimpse of Apocalypse before. So Superman's getting his or Clark Kent is getting his first glimpse of Apocalypse. He's getting to meet, you know, have his first time meeting another new god since he met the Forever People. So it's it's interesting that that um, we get this connective tissue this late, that it took this this long for um, him to sort of realize who he's tangling with. His parademons rise to welcome us now. Don't fear for Light Ray, but allow me to help you out of this. For reasons which make it imperative to return to Earth, I accept. I mean, this is so fun and so great. Uh, as a fan of both Superman and Jack Kirby's New Gods, and it is a, a damn motherfucking shame that you know, this little storyline doesn't continue to the point where, you know, Clark Kent doffs his uh, his attire, turns into Superman, and goes toe-to-toe with some parademons under Jack Kirby's pencil. Like, how amazing would that be? You know, there have been plenty of comics since then where, where Superman tangles with parademons, and there's been some TV cartoons and stuff, but... Uh, you know, never from Jack Kirby. There is an issue coming up of Jimmy Olsen where Superman fights some new Genesis, new gods, which is, uh, you know, a really great standout issue. But man, you know, I, I, Superman on Apocalypse by Jack Kirby. Give me that. And we cut back to Goody Rickles and Jimmy Olsen and really great sequence, taking really nice advantage of the, the Metropolis venue or the, or, or, you know, the stand-in for, for Manhattan, but being on a crowded subway car as this pyrogranulate is starting to take effect, as he's starting to smoke. Why didn't you in that loudmouth take a cab, young fellow? He hasn't shut up for a second. I got a lot to talk about, lady. I got a lot to cry about, too. Only I'm too proud to go to pieces. Keep trying. Don't get upset, Goody. Emotional stimulus could activate that chemical inside us. I think it's activating, Jimmy boy. I can feel it. Hot and crazy like, goodbye, world. Goodbye, Jimmy. Goodbye, you old. Goodbye already, jerk. But before you go, schmo, jump into a telephone booth and get into a decent suit. Look out, Zelda. You're steaming me. You may yet leave this train with a split shopping bag. And you, you hockey puck. Can't you read signs? They say no smoking in this car, and I can smell you, man. Look who's talking. Great joke. There's no smoking as he's starting to smolder. And finally, issue two of this celebration of Don Rickles, we get Hockey Puck, his uh, signature insult. Goody, your metabolism is reacting to the chemical. Your pores are emitting vapor. My God, I'm going out of this world. A human sauna bath. It's devilish, Jimmy. I I don't feel a thing. Perhaps it's a side effect of pyrogranulate. Perhaps we won't feel anything until the last moment when we go thermal. It looks like I'm going first, Jimmy. I ate more of that stuff than you did. Now let me get to my exit speech. Tis a far, far better thing I do. I can't believe this. I'm dying, but I'm getting laughs. (laughs) I like his spiking the camera. You know, I can see why Jack uh, wanted to get off the the Jimmy Olsen book as soon as possible and and devote his energies to like his real passion projects. But give me more Goody Rickles. Give me more of The Guardian. Give me more Jack Kirby's Superman. It, it, it It is a lot of fun. The situation is desperate, however. Tragedy is often covered by jest. 
The only hope of Jimmy and Goody staying alive rests on the agility of the Golden Guardian. And yeah, the Guardian's uh, sort of, you know, high energy action acrobatics continues. Timing is everything at a moment like this. The mobile home and I must make contact. Now, the Guardian's tempered shield then slices through a metal air vent. Here I come, ugly Mannheim, ready or not. Man, this, this whole sequence, these two pages are so great. I mean, and just, just like looking at the flow of the images, you know, he jumps down, swings with his shield, hops in there. They're shooting at him. He's blocking with his shield. Uh, he's, he's jumping away from everything. Big kick, big, you know, his, his feet slamming into these guys, knocking them through the wall of the mobile home and out into the street. Look at this pose here as he's like jumping onto, jumping over the desk, being shot at, uh, you know, reinforcements coming in from the other room. I'm just like an amazing action sequence. And then back to the comedy. I really love the balancing act that's going on in this issue. Just one moment, Don. Let me try to simplify my proposition. Yeah, do that, oh devious one. You can hide a platoon of assassins in a complex deal. Uh, that That's become like one of the great like quotable Jack Kirby lines that especially like applies to, you know, his experiences in the comics business. I'm back, Mr. Edge. And now that I'm dying, I can find the nerve to finally tell you what I think of. I'm back, Mr. Edge. And now that I'm dying, I can find the nerve to really tell you what I think of. Oh no, 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 no. And so, yeah, <laughs> again, this is, this is like another sitcom trope where like the two twins show up in the same scene. Uh, you know, you'd have like a little split screen line going down the middle and, and, and uh, saying the same words at the same time. Hey, you're stepping on my lines, fella. Gee, I, I couldn't help it. Suddenly you were there and I kept rattling on like, uh, uh, I, 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 I think I'm going bananas. You look like... Mr. Edge, you don't understand. Please let me explain. You look like... Sure, why not? This is a weird network, so why shouldn't it get weirder? Don Rickles, I always wondered what would happen if we ever met. We've practically got the same face, almost the same name. Go back. Go back and wait in the mirror. Why are you watching me sweat? I'm Goody Rickles, sir, lowly researcher and flowering reporter. Of course, now that I'm dying, my great talent will never rise to kill your ratings. This microbe isn't kidding. His body's going up in smoke. The office begins to radiate glowing illumination. Pyrogranulate begins to show signs of deadly activity. It's happening, Jimmy. This time it's for real. Hang on, Goody. It's not over yet. For Pete's sake, Morgan, what time do these guys go off? I want to get out of here alive. Don, I'm asking you to do something very noble. Trust me. Just wait in this ante room. Read some magazines. I assure you that your patience will be rewarded. Thank you. Save me, God. This is idiot's day. And I went out unarmed. And, you know, it's getting worse. They're starting to uh, radiate flames. It's a rare chemical. Jimmy knows its name. The network must find the antidote, sir, please. Of all the fool things to happen right here in my office. Ugly Mannheim has made a shambles of my scheme to rid myself of these dolts. And this is the result of his disobeying my orders to kill them quickly. Hello? Is this the police bomb disposal squad? So yeah, now Morgan Edge is forced to intervene. He's probably not in a huge rush, but it would be very bad for him to have the two people he ordered to be killed die in his office with him there, you know, bursting into flames. Oh, will you look at that? A super yo-yo with a shield busting in the window. Hi, guy. We're sharing the same straitjacket. And again... Golden Guardian is off in his own story, you know, while all these other, you know, plot lines are going on, and his is action-packed, you know, bursting through there with, you know, glass shattering everywhere, uh, you know, jumping, jumping into the fire of, of Olsen and, and Goody Rickles. The antidote acts quickly. The pyrogranulate has been neutralized, so he's why my plans went awry. Hey, this stuff isn't bad. It's not unlike cheap wine. So, um... Uh, the Guardian got the antidote, which he took from Ugly Mannheim to Jimmy and Goody Rickles just in the nick of time. It's a dark day for Darkseid, but there will be new and better ways to get rid of them. Can you stand, Goody? I know you've had a bad time of it. Oh, it was nothing. Just a cowardly attempt on my life. Easy, easy. Morgan, I know you're some kind of sadist, 
but can you tell me honestly if this cuckoo charade is over? I'm in great condition, muscles like rocks, but all of this has left me on the ropes. I'm on the ropes! Well, take a breather. Sit in a chair, think about your mother's cooking. So yeah, uh, Don's gonna, you know, relax after all this excitement. Yeah, that's the ticket. Yeah, that's the ticket. A chair and dreams about cheese Danish. Oh no, no, a materializing boom tube emerging here. Now what? What's that noise suddenly all around me? Boom! And we've never seen this before. A boom tube emerge right over somebody's head, uh, you know, blowing their comb over in every direction. Hail, friends, Clark Kent greets you from the vast unknown. Clark, Clark, you're back. And as the boom tube fades, you made it back in a boom tube, how? With an assist from a very unique friend out there. But it's sure great to see you, chums. Nice to see you too, Mr. Edge. We learned quite a bit from the assignment you gave us. It was dangerous, but highly intriguing. Uh, you know, we're finally getting that encounter with Jimmy Olsen and Clark Kent uh, confronting Morgan Edge about like, you know, what the fuck's been going on? These, cra these, uh, these deadly dangerous assignments you've been sending us on with these attempts on our life. Uh, but again, there's just so much going on. They don't get quite the reckoning they were looking for. Fine, Kent, we'll discuss it later. Yeah, uh, Morgan Edge is gonna stall and stall and stall uh, as long as he possibly can. Stay where you are, touch nothing. Police bomb disposal unit, where is he? Where is the human bomb? Sorry, officers, I called too soon. What? We did have an emergency here, but it was brought under control. That's a lie, I'm the bomb, and I'm primed to blow. Get me out of here, stop me from killing. Tick, 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 hear that? Grab me, but handle me with care. Hey, Mr. Rickles, could you still spare a second to sign an autograph? Tick, 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 hurry, hurry, or this building goes up. Poor guy, with your routine, this had to happen. So yeah, just a real screwball comedy issue with enough, you know, superheroic excitement, enough kind of, you know, sci-fi thrills, uh, you know, a glimpse of apocalypse. This, this is great stuff. This is, you know, just really strong. And now friends, if you enjoyed this visit from Don Rickles, you'll cringe and cower and moan in fear when you meet the visitor in this next incredible adventure of Jimmy Olsen and Superman's. In the next issue, prepare to meet the man from Transylvania. One of my favorite storylines in this series coming up. And, uh, you know, just a real highlight. Superman and Jimmy Olsen get to, you know, really shine in this next adventure. I'm Tom Scholey, author of Jack Kirby, The Epic Life of the King of Comics. I am Stan, a graphic biography of the legendary Stan Lee. And Jack Kirby's Star Warriors, The Adventures of Adam Starr and the Solar Legion. I'm also the author of Witchman, a new superhero comic which recently had a successful Kickstarter campaign. I'll see you next time for New God Sunday School.